All right, yeah. Um, the street medics are a, a group of people who are loosely affiliated. Uh, some have first aid training, some have, uh, I have combat first aid training. Some people are doctors, some people are nurses. Uh, when did you, which branch did you serve in? U.S. Navy, 1998 to 2002. Awesome. And I worked with Special Forces. Wow. And um, I was not Special Forces, but I worked with them. And, uh, were you so, de deployed? Or were you, were you... Uh, no, I worked at the Office of Naval Intelligence and deployed to, uh, uh, on temporary assignments overseas, but never anything permanent. I never spent more than a month or two overseas. Wow. So, uh, but the street medics, uh, we're there. We're, we're neutral. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're neither for nor against anything that's being talked about or protested. We're there to make sure that everybody gets home safely that night and that they don't fall over with heat exhaustion. Most of our job is giving water to older folks because they're having a hard time marching in these long marches, and sometimes they got to sit down and. Yeah, a, I'm trouble keeping water. up too. My ankle's yeah. hurting. I, I was over there at the, uh, the show, and I was like up front in front of the crowd there like the whole time. So yeah. I'm like... Yeah, we, we carry bottles of water in our packs so we can like, you know, hand out water if we see somebody who looks like they're suffering from a little bit of heat exhaustion. And, uh, you know, some of us are expecting, you know, bad things to occur at this year's, you know, protest. So I, I brought a, a level one trauma kit. I can even stitch someone up if I have to. So. Wow. And, but mostly what we're worried about is uh, heat exhaustion, uh, you know, uh, stroke, heat stroke, things like that. And then as far as the police action goes, impact wounds, um, you know, beanbag impact and stuff like that that can cause severe bruising and contusion, especially if it hits your sternum, can knock the wind out of you. It did do that in St. Paul in 2008, and I had to fireman carry a woman out of, an older woman out of what had become a combat zone. Wow. That's pretty intense, man. So you've done, you've gone to a lot of these protests. Yeah, I was, um, I, the, I was at the G20 in Pittsburgh in 2009. Uh, in 2008, I went to both the RNC and the DNC. Uh, in 2014, I went to Australia for the G20 in Brisbane, and I was a street medic there. I actually joined the Sydney Street Medics. That's what this patch is from. It's from Australia. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. So yeah. you've been all around the world, huh? Oh yeah, yeah. Not bad for a guy on disability. Oh really? Yeah, I spent part of my back pay on uh, the trip to Australia because it's either that. I had already bought a house, and I figured it's either that or buy a car. And since I hate cars and haven't driven <laughs> in probably 20 years, right. I thought Australia would be a lot more fun. Yeah, that sounds like it was worth it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. How long did you stay out there? Uh, you know, actually I was out there for about seven months and uh, getting to know the people and working with them and learning what the issues are in Australia so I knew, you know, when not to step on people's toes. And, you know, had to learn the, uh, the culture there so I didn't say anything wrong or anything like that because they've got, you know, there's like a distinct, there's a distinct Aboriginal culture and there's a distinct Australian culture and they don't always get along. Right. And, uh, you know, Did you visit like Western Australia? No, I know. I just visited Sydney and Brisbane. And okay. I spent most of the time in Sydney. There's an anarchist group there that I hung out with. Oh, cool. And, uh, and then went to Brisbane and the whole G20, uh, like, it didn't get co-opted by any outside uh, agitators like you know yeah. communists or something like that it stayed within the purview uh, of the Aboriginal group that was putting it on like uh, we were able to make sure that, that they were the ones who were running the show if anybody needed to talk to the media it was one of them okay and so we made sure that the Aborigines had their voice and that they weren't drowned out by so what did you white do to make sure their... that you know uh, agent provocateurs or whatever or, or sub uh, people trying to subvert, subverse the uh, the movement. Like, how did you, you know, make well, sure just that? Talk to them. Okay. And if it looked like they were agitating for violence, that was something that the Aborigines said that they would not tolerate. And what we told people that were talking about doing, you know, property destruction or something like that, we would be like, look, that's that's not what the people who are really at the forefront of this want. They don't want that, and you're going to be co-opting their movement and their message if you do this. And that should make you. That will make you a white privileged, classist piece of shit mm -hmm. if you do this. Think about the other people who who have had a far worse time than you ever will. And that worked. You know, that talking to people and you know, kind of laying it down that you know, it's the Aborigines are the ones who are doing this, not the uh, not the white folks. You gotta. They they coordinated the housing. They coordinated everything. And uh, 
It was actually one of the coolest mass actions I've ever been to. There was no tear gas. Wow. No tear gas, no bean bags, no pepper bullets. Do you no see that kind bullets. of thing in most of the protests you go through? American protests, yeah. Yeah. It seems like it's been pretty peaceful so far. Do you uh uh, you know, do you, do you anticipate uh, something going on here, and if so, uh, what time or when? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I know there's a bunch of pro-Trump protesters here, and most of them are open carry armed. That kind of worries me. It's, Where have you seen them located? Uh, going down uh, Superior Street around the security zone. Um, I've seen bikers and truckers for Trump carrying weapons on their motorcycles, riding by or walking, you know, walking around downtown. I've probably seen. 15 or 20 people open carrying in the last 24 hours and okay. you know that's nothing good can come of that I mean those people they're not trained police officers they're not trained with levels of escalation and whatnot they're just rednecks with guns and I'm kind of worried that there may be somebody injured as a result of their you know stupid behavior would you be uh, would you say you're more concerned of uh you know, a redneck with a gun or the police uh, causing something? I'm, I'm honestly more concerned with a redneck with a gun. Because okay. it, they're not, the police aren't likely to shoot somebody with live ammunition, but the redneck with a gun is. And, uh, you know, that, that kind of worries me. The cops have been, you know, I haven't seen any riot cops yet. I mean, we're surrounded by police right now, but they're all in their standard uniforms. They're not wearing helmets and face visors and shields and stuff like that. I agree with you, other than uh, there was a group on a bike that had a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, gear on and stuff. But uh, they didn't have, sh I don't think they had shields, but they were on bikes and they were like heavily armored, you know. Uh, there's different kind of cops here. I've seen at least a few different. Yeah, well six police departments backed out of this action because of Cleveland's poor planning. They say Cleveland just was not prepared for what's going to happen at the RNC and they said we're not putting our officers in danger like that so they pulled out. Wow. Those cops in Michigan, uh, Tucson. Is it the stand down that I was hearing about? Yeah. Okay. I, th I, I don't know. I haven't heard about a stand down but I know there were like six police officers that are like no, fuck you, I'm not doing this. Okay. Well, it seems like it's pretty much under control. Uh, you know, my my biggest worry are like, you know, agent provocateurs or like, a, you know, people from like the government, you know, trying to cause issues. You know, like we've seen in Ferguson and other protests where you got guys in masks, like, uh, you know, throwing uh, rocks and things from behind the crowds, and uh, you know. Uh, instigating violence and things like that. Uh, I think that's that's an important thing to look out for because that people have been caught like that, like undercover cops or agents or whatever, trying to dress up like protesters and then causing uh, problems. Have you ever heard anything like that? Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I keep myself located towards the mid or front of a group because uh, if I see um, if I see agitators trying to start violence in, in a group, I start taking pictures and be like, hey, this is what a cop looks like. And I post it up on the internet, you know, and make a YouTube video about it and be like, this is what a cop looks like, this is what agitators look like. And uh, I think a lot of people have that opinion as well. A lot of people have smartphones in their pockets and they're ready to take pictures of anyone who throws a rock. This seems like probably the most documented uh, public event in history. Like everybody's got yeah. a camera and yeah, or a phone, them. you know. There's, there's a lot of a lot of documentation going on, that's for sure. Yeah, which is a good thing. It holds people accountable, you know. Yeah. And also, you know, it holds the police accountable, yeah. too. You know? Yeah, Yeah. them especially, you know, yeah. because they're, they're given the authority to, you know, restrict our rights in certain situations if they feel we're a threat. You know, they can detain us and they can yeah. point guns at us and... Tase you and yeah. search through your bag with no probable cause. Right. So they they definitely are, are the ones to be most held accountable for. Well, thank you for your for your time and your yeah, words. no problem. I'd like to hear your perspective. Okay. Yeah, and you, would you like to share your name? Yeah, Wesley. Wesley. All right, Wesley. Yeah, thanks.